Hello, everybody. This is September checking in from the PTS server today. In this video, I want to cover three things. First, we're going to take a look at the August update. Next, we're going to take a look at the big announcement of the server merges or quote unquote evolution. And finally, we're going to take a look at the current RNG box, the True Colors crate. Okay, so first up is the August update. In the upcoming update, we're, we've got the three things that I want to take a look, uh, look at. First, a new event aimed at getting people to participate in the Titan or the Thunderwing Titan. Uh, not sure what the official name of it is, but based on what I've read, let's go with Call of the Daru. So there's not really much information about it, but it looks like it's going to be the Daru handing out quests with the goal to encourage people to do quests related to the Thunderwing Titan encounter. I suppose that if you're uh, in one of those guilds or one of those player nations that does the Thunderwing Titan anyway, you know, it's good news for you, you get more stuff. Uh, but if you're not one of those people, perhaps this is an incentive to get you to band together and uh, try to do the Thunderwing Titan yourselves. Next in the August update is the return of the Blue Salt Festival. This is an event that actually appears in Sandeep. Uh, hopefully there'll be peace period during it. And it is actually a beach themed event. It's like summertime-ish. It's really cool. Uh, so what you'll be doing is you'll be tasked with painting and building sand sculptures, as well as defending the beach from the time boss spawns, which happens three times a day. If you do this, you will be awarded in blue salt tokens you can use to buy various prizes, including roast chickens for your house, sand sculptures, paintings, and a few other things. In years past, the big prizes for this event have included a 30-day Enoan Galleon. Yes, I said that correct. That was a 30-day Enoan Galleon. Uh, last year, we saw a 30-day Timber Coop, and we also had a Green Man plushie pet. Uh, however, this year the big prize is uh, pretty tamed in comparison and seems so to at least currently be on the PTS as the Bakatons, Swimpins, and the Greblus dive helm. Which, when I saw this, I honestly thought it was a bug or a mistake, uh, considering that you can craft either one of those for 50 or 60 gold in mats uh, any time of the year. Requiring a large amount of tokens plus 30 gold to craft these items in an event seems ridiculous. And this is not this is not XL, or I'm sorry, this is not Tryon, guys. This is what Tryon got from XL. So I'm go I've got a post on the PTS forums. If you're not happy about these event prizes or have recommendations on what could be in there, please uh, check the link in the description. Uh, and put your comments in the PTS forum. Maybe we can get it changed before it goes live. So the last thing in the August update is some bug fixes, and I'm not going to read those all, but various things like the uh, new, new Amari Warehouse Manager. I guess it was attacking player nations, so that is supposed to be fixed. Uh, random migra Migration Talisman Box is now openable, which I don't ever use those things, but those are those ones that you can take your stats, like, turn your strength into intelligence or vice versa. Uh, I, I guess those boxes weren't open openable, so now they are. Uh, and finally, there's also some graphical fixes with the hoodie costumes and some of the clipping that was going on. The uh, most notable change that I think that I see here is that they've done another pass at the Violet Bloom Fang pet, which was causing people to get banned inappropriately again or still depending on how you look at so that's supposed to be addressed again so that is pretty much the august update in a nutshell if you would like to comment on the blue salt prizes again uh, i've got a post in the pts forum you can say your piece in that uh, it, also if you would like to read the entire pts patch notes a link will be in the video description Okay, so now we're going to move on to the big announcement of the server merges, and I've already seen some YouTube videos on this, uh, but I am also going to cover it because, you know, maybe you don't watch everybody else. Uh, Arcage is actually going to be merging low pop population servers together. 
This is going to be a three into one merge, meaning that three servers are going to be completely removed and those players are going to have to rebuild their empire on a completely new server. More on that here in a minute. But uh, to try to alleviate some of the frustration with merges, uh, Tryon is offering everybody free character transfers to the higher population servers or the ones that aren't being merged. On North America, that would be the Aranzeb, Kyrios, and the Kraken servers. On EU, there are two of them, and that is the Shadagon and Iana servers. Uh, uh, the Fresh Start servers, which is the Vengeance Reckoning and Prophecy servers, are not included in uh, the merge into or out of. They are really not affected at all with these server merges. So for those of you who are wanting to pack up their shit and get out, you can take the free transfer starting on August 16th and run through August 29th. That will be those transfers to the higher population servers. Um, all the normal character transfer restrictions do apply. And it's really hard to get all your stuff to a new server if you've been playing a long time. So that might not be a viable option. But if you're one of those persons, uh, you know, you can get that done for free from the 16th to the 29th. For everybody else willing to get merged into the new servers, the process will begin on September 4th. And that is always started by the auction house closing down. So on September 4th, that will be the end of new listings. And the servers will come offline September 7th through the 9th. So that's basically two days of no arcade. Um, I think they said that all servers, even the ones that aren't affected by merges, will be offline. Perhaps the PTS server will still be up if you're Jones in for some arcade. Uh, the servers will be coming back up on ninth, the 9th in a staggered fashion meaning they're not going to try to bring up all the clusters at the same time. They're going to stagger it out. I don't know how that's going to work. And it's it, it's a headache in itself because, you know, maybe, you know, it's a two-hour delay and, and you might make it on the earlier end and not the later end, depending on your life, your work schedule, all that stuff. However they're going to do it, they're going to try to take a, a cue from lessons in the past where we have just hammered the servers when they come up and only like a handful of people get in and then it's no fair to any of the people that don't get in uh but they're they're trying guys they're they're really trying uh, additionally they're going to also have an afk kick timer so you're not going to be able to log in a thousand alts and uh you know clog up the the queue that way so for those of you who have never been through a merge i'm sure you have a lot of questions um, I have been through it myself. If you have questions, please post it in the comments. I read them all. Uh, I will try to answer them. I was originally on Kalil, which got merged into Hanor. Now Hanor is getting merged into Thunderwing. So, you know, I've been through it before, but here is the lowdown from what I've heard and from what I've been through in the past. So what happens is when your new, when your new server comes up, you'll log in into the starting zone or your racial starting zone. Your houses are going to be returned to you as full kits, meaning they're fully built. All you have to do is find land and put them down. Those will be given to you via the mail system. So you'll go ahead and grab your houses from the mailbox and then toot sweet, get your ass to the land that you want. And I say that because usually within 30 minutes of the servers being up, Pretty much all of the prime spots are taken and you're kind of left with, you know, just kind of getting something wherever. Uh, but there's also more land than there ever has been or at least has been in the past. Both Nuia and Herania have new starting zones. Thank you to the dwarves and the warborns. So I'm actually a bit optimistic that it's not going to be as bad as it was at least last time. Uh, finally, the Aurora land won't be claimable right away, so don't rush there. <laughs> You're not going to be able to get it. Uh, so the way that's going to work is the Diamond Shores has to be ranked up to uh, Stage 3. It's going to start at Stage 2, so you're going to have to do your Prestige Packs. Uh, once your server gets the Diamond Shores Castle or the Diamond Shores Fort uh, to Stage 3, 
that following Sunday, the castles will be claimable, and that will be the start of the Aurora land rush or the second land rush. So that is uh, pretty much how all the uh, merges and evolutions is going to work. Uh, I know you probably have a ton of questions. And again, I will answer those in the comments if I can. If not, hopefully somebody else who's also been through this will uh, try to help you out. Uh, but I can say that the last time I didn't lose any items. And all stuff, all my stuff was eventually returned to me. And uh, we even got some compensation, compensation in the way of gold and tax certs. Uh, for all the properties that we have built. And so from what I understand, at least on the tax cert part of it, is that they plan on giving you five weeks worth of tax certs uh, based off of the value of the house. Obviously, like a mansion, which costs more tax certs, you're going to get a lot more. So that's kind of a way to fairly compensate you for that. So I would say you don't want to prepay <laughs> all, all your tax certs. Um, because uh, with the servers going down on the 7th, uh, you just need to make sure that you have a built property on that date and you will get five time or five weeks worth of tax certs for them. Uh, another main concern that I know people have is with name collisions, in particular somebody with a common name uh, like me, September. Uh, in the past, what they have done is they went by the creation date and they awarded the person with the most seniority the name and I assume that they're going to do something like that again uh, this time around they also will be looking I think at activity so if somebody you know played for a month when the game first came out and they never played again chances are that you should be able to get your name uh, as an active player okay so the fact that I've already been through this before I feel like the mergers are going to be fine uh, most people will it will end up with close to what they had uh, before, and they just won't lose anything. And I'm sure, as it always happens, something will get messed up, and somebody will lose something very near and dear to their heart. And um, you'll have to fight with customer support to get everything uh, planned. Then I know, of course, there's also going to be others that have a, voca uh, a vacation planned or that they're going to be on call for work or something important is going to prevent them from playing the day of the merge. You're going to get upset and rightfully so. I understand the frustration. It could even happen to me. I don't know. But for most of us, we'll simply rebuild and carry on as we always have, perhaps even making some new friends along the way. So I will post a link to all the current information on the server merges and the video description if you would like to read it directly from Tryon. Okay, and finally, the last thing I want to cover in this video is the new RNG box that is the True Colors RNG crate. As you can see here in my bag, I have 300 of these. And once again, I am on the PTS server. So we're going to go ahead and open these up and take a look at the items and the values I get. I will uh, do a spreadsheet that shows you the items that dropped along with the quantities and the values of them. So let's go ahead and get to opening these up. Opening crate. All right, so uh, there is everything that I got out of the, uh, the, the loot there. That was 300 
Um, as you can see here, it starts in this row, ends in this row. So it's this box area here is everything I got. I'm not going to list it all verbally. Uh, it will be in the spreadsheet that I uh, show you here. Um, so what I did is I grouped everything by the miscellaneous items uh, and then try to group up things that are similar. So you've got the Synthium, the Regrade stuff, the Luna Gems, the Luna Frost, the Costume slash Storage, and then the Luna Rights. I also then figured out, based off of the North America legacy servers, what all that would be worth. And it comes out to about 69,000 gold. Um, selling at the current prices, some things are up, like the because of the regrade event, the moon points, the sun points are up. Uh, wh whereas because of the crates, things are down, like the uh, Luna Frost and um, Luna Gems. So, you know, it'll probably average out. And then also what I did in the spreadsheet is uh, I took the total credits. That was 135,000 credits. And then I looked at the various ways to obtain those credits. Three ways being the daily credit package, which you can buy from Tryon for $39. Ultimately, you end up with 11,220 credits, which gives you a total credits of 280 credits per dollar spent uh, versus if you were to buy the top credit package, which is the $100 package, you would get uh, 20,000, but that averages out to around 204 credits per dollar. And then finally, you look at Apex. Apex is uh, horrible, um, it, but if you were to buy Apex, it, it, you know it's a quick seller, and that's the reason people do that. Um, you get to about a dollar per Apex, uh, or 125 uh, credits <clears throat> per Apex dollar. Um, so, in that way, that's what you would calculate to figure out how if it's worth selling it or buying these RNG boxes. But anyway, everything's listed here. The only thing that uh, I would like to point out off, off of the drops is I actually did not see the Aurorian storage chest. I got two of the uh, pirate plushy troves, um, but I didn't see the Aurorian storage chest. And I know those drop out of this out of this box, but for whatever reason, 300 wasn't quite enough to uh, get one out of this round. Although I've opened more and got them, so, you know, I know they're in there. Uh, other than that, you know, it's RNG. You know, you might not, not might not get something that sells good, you know, like uh, it, like if you take a look at the sun points, I got more sun points than I did anything else, like moon points or star points. But it could, th those numbers could be backwards on your what you open. But, you know, in the long run, this is about what it's worth. You're looking around 69,000 gold. So there you go. There's the numbers. The spreadsheet will be posted as well, a link in the video description. And finally, before I close out this section here, there was some other notable things to see that like the uh, the Crest storage packs, those are used on the uh, the, the boats. Uh, if your boat can uh, use a cannon, so you could put one on a clipper, you could put eight or more, maybe 12 on a galleon. Um, but uh, they're the lightest uh, storage pack so they are very uh, they're the best in slot for the uh, hauling cargo in boats and finally the uh, the big or the the notable prize out of this is the courageous Nui uh, chosen uniform this is what it looks like on a male and I'm gonna throw a screenshot up from Jin Dragon or Felina from the PTS who modeled all colors of this costume I'll throw that up now and it'll be up here just for a few seconds so you can see what it looks like, at least on a female and the uh, various color versions. Well, that is it for this video. I want to thank you guys for hanging out and watching all of this. You know my goal for every YouTube video is to be both helpful and informative. If you feel like I have achieved that goal, please remember to like and subscribe on your way out. If you would like to discuss anything mentioned in this video, please do so in the comment section down below. I pretty much read everything. Finally, if you would like to support the work that I do for the various online game communities, you can follow me on Twitch and Twitter, and you can also do so financially with as little as $1 by becoming a Patreon. All those links will be in the video description. Until next time, September same. 
Be well.